So just beginning to settle in on the belly. Yeah. And you can just um, rest your forehead on your mat or you can make a little pillow with your arms if that feels good. Yeah, that, that pad might be too much, Samantha, but probably it'll be more comfortable. Good. So just, yeah, you can turn your head to the side or you can rest your forehead facing down. <laughs> Yeah, now the animals have to come and check to make sure you're okay because you're laying on the floor. <laughs> All right. So just give yourself a minute here to let your body settle. Feel that the floor is underneath your body. And feel that the ground is holding your body. So when you connect to that sense of being held, of being supported, it allows us to relax a little bit more. Okay, we can feel our body let go a little bit more because you don't have to hold it together here. You can allow your body to be held by the earth. I'll take just a few more breaths here and maybe even mentally scan through your body and make sure that you have softened. So I'm noticing the shoulders, the belly, the glutes, and as you settle into stillness, You can begin to shift your attention to your breath. Not with the intention to manipulate your breath, but with the intention to just pay attention to your breath. To consciously place your awareness on your breath. So Jennifer, we're just starting on our bellies, just laying on our bellies if you wanna join in. A few more moments here, just breathing in, breathing out. Inviting this practice of stillness to arrive. From this place on the belly, if you have um, a lot of prop underneath your hips, you may want to remove it now. So we're going to draw our right knee out to the side. So it's like a half frog pose. Okay. If you need a little pad and still under your hips, you can keep it or you can remove it. 
And I'm just drawing my right knee out to the side. So now it's in line with my right hip. And roughly my right ankle is in line with my right knee. And again, this is really, um, it doesn't have to be exact. I want you to just think about just like a gentle opening on the right inner thigh. You know, and if you're not feeling a whole lot of sensation, that's okay. It doesn't have to be super sensational. Okay, now you can keep your upper body resting on the ground. Another option would be to come up on your elbows. Okay, so that's gonna just invite the front of the belly to get a little more stretch. And it's gonna invite a little bit of arch into the spine. Okay, so you can stay here or you can stay here. Okay, it's up to you to decide what feels good in your body here. Okay, and if you are up on your elbows but you wanna bring a little more ease into your neck, this is a really nice option. Lock under the forehead. And then we sit here and we stay. You know, sometimes when we drop into our yin poses, sometimes it feels really good and it feels really easy to stay. And sometimes it doesn't feel like anything. Sometimes it feels boring. Okay, but the practice is to stay and to settle and to notice. Notice what comes up. Notice the breath. Notice the sensation in the body. And see if you can work with wherever you are. Let's take just about five more breaths on this side. Allow your right leg to slide back. And if you're lifted up onto your elbows, take a moment now to just lower down and find a little release. So it might feel good to rock the hips a little bit from side to side. And when you feel like you come back to neutral, you feel ready to move on to the other side. We'll draw the left knee out to the side. So just switching sides. Okay, if your floor is really hard and it feels uncomfortable on your knee, feel free to grab a blanket or a towel and tuck it under so that you're not feeling discomfort from the floor. Okay, decide whether you want to stay down for this one for the side or whether you want to come up under your elbows. Okay. Side if you need support for your head. And then in whatever variation of this posture you've ended up in, see if you can soften. Okay. Is there anywhere in your body that you've started to grip. And bring your attention.
attention to the areas that feel particularly tight or achy. Can you send your breath into that space? And think about softening. And allow the ground to support the weight of your body a little bit more. more breaths here. Two more breaths. slowly slide the left leg back. If you're up on your elbows, go ahead and lower down. Maybe let the hips rock from side to side or maybe even windshield wiper the feet if that feels good. as easily as you can slide your hands back and ease yourself towards a puppy pose. So hips above the knees, arms are extending forward, spine long. And stay in puppy pose, or if you'd prefer to come right into a child's pose, you're welcome to do that also. So you decide what feels good. You can tuck in or you can lengthen out. Feel free, as always, to interpret my suggestions in a way that works for you in a way that best meets your needs today. We'll take just about five more breaths in our child's pose or our puppy pose. Slide forward the hands and knees and take a couple of cat and cow stretches on your own. So just allowing a little bit of intuitive flow to come up. Allowing the spine to move in ways that feel good. No right or wrong here. Just a couple of cycles of cat and cow, whatever that means to you.
Uh, coming back to hands and knees. We're just going to thread the left arm under the right arm. Coming into threading the needle. So my left arm is extended. The outside of my left shoulder is getting a really nice stretch. Twist in the spine. I like to do this with my hips lifted, but you can also do this with your hips on your heels. Just a little different. I'm not going to be here too long because this is um, a fairly active stretch. We'll take just a few more breaths here. Good. Really slowly, really gently ease your way back to hands and knees. And take a few breaths to just come back to neutral, maybe a couple more cat and cows. Whatever it is you feel like you need to do to find that neutral. And when you're ready, we'll go ahead and just switch sides. So right arm threads under left, snuggling into that place that feels just right. Getting a really nice um, stretch on the outside of the right shoulder. Starting to find a little bit of twist in the spine. And just breathing into the space between the shoulder blades. Two more breaths here. And slowly bring yourself out of the posture. Come back to neutral. And a couple of cat and cows. And from here, we're just gonna stretch back into downward facing dog just to move through transition. Okay, so we won't be here too long. Just lengthening the spine, maybe pedaling the feet. Yeah, whatever it is that feels good here. This is, this should feel good. So if you're using blocks, it might be uh, helpful to have them already at the top of your mat that you can use them moving forward. From downward facing dog, we're gonna just start to walk the feet forward and we're gonna land in a standing forward fold. So there's lots of different ways to use props here. I'm gonna go ahead and face forward so you can see 
When I do my supported standing forward fold, when I'm doing it in a yin class, I like to stack my blocks. And then I bend my knees so that I can really rest my forearms on the blocks. Okay, now, if you don't have this flexibility, you could use a chair or any sort of surface here to make it higher, right? Okay, so these are options. Okay, so we want our standing forward fold in the in class to be somewhat supported. Okay, so knees are bent generously. And maybe if you can get your arms crossed on your blocks, maybe you can rest your head on your arms. Okay, I realize this is not always a possibility for everyone, but it's an option. And again, like I suggested, a chair or even a back of the couch, something you have at home that can support you. So we're going to settle in here and allow ourselves to just get a really nice back body release. So pay attention where the feet press into the ground and see if you can get a sense of your feet pressing evenly into the ground, but also that you're balancing on the front and the back of the foot evenly. Okay, so oftentimes we either lean forward or we sink back. Okay, so I actually am going to move my blocks back a little bit to help with that. Okay, my knees are soft. And then from the soles of the feet, maybe just follow that line of energy up the back of the body. Feeling that nice big stretch across the lower back, the glutes. Feel the head hanging, allowing the weight of your head to provide a little traction. The hips lift up, the head hangs down. Let's take just five more breaths here. One more breath in, one more breath out. So from your standing forward fold, you can bring, um, if you're using your blocks, bring your hands onto one block each and maybe just find some length in the spine for a moment. And so this just helps to kind of regulate that blood flow that went to the head. So you don't feel too dizzy. And remove. So I'm just lengthening. And then from here, I'm just going to step my right foot back and bring my right knee down. So I'm coming into a box stretch. So again, I'm just going to face forward so you can see that my legs are on separate tracks. And I'm just gonna bring my hands or my forearms onto my blocks here. Okay, so I'm hugging my left inner thigh towards the outside of my left shoulder. And if I look between my legs, there's a perfect square. So this isn't a lizard pose. I'm gonna turn to the side. It's not a lizard pose. So I'm not stretching my right hip flexor. That's not part of the equation here. That's stabilizing me. This is really about my left hip. 
Okay, so hopefully you can see there's a square. And I'm keeping my left inner knee attached to my left outer shoulder. So there's a little bit of um, a little bit of uh, yang to the skin pose. There's a little bit of action. It's not totally passive. Let's take just a few more breaths here. Now, if you'd like to move more into a lizard pose from here, I'm gonna go ahead and you can either step your left foot forward a little bit or you can slide your right knee back. Okay, so now it becomes, it invites the front of the right hip into it, the right hip flexor, but we're still into that left outer hip as well. So if coming down onto your forearms feels like too much, it's feeling a little bit like too much to me, I'm going to actually use my blocks and just press my hands into it. And I'm still going to keep a little bit of activity in my inner thighs here. Okay, so I don't want to completely go like jelly here. But I like to kind of play the edge of pulling up and in and relaxing out. Okay, and you can always stay in that box stretch if you don't want to get into the hip flexor, if that's not feeling good today. Okay, so you have options. And I encourage you for the next few breaths to play around with inviting a little bit of tension to the inner thighs, a little bit of firing up of the muscles, and a little bit of letting go, kind of playing that edge. And I feel like it's really healthy to do that when we're working in our hip region, our hip flexors. It's important to engage the muscles and release. Okay, one more breath here. Now in either variation, we're going to tuck the, the back toes and we're going to straighten both legs and we'll pivot into a straddle. So I'm going to take my blocks with me and I'm going to do my straddle just like I did my standing forward fold. I'm going to set up my blocks. I'm going to bend my knees a little bit and I'm going to find that supported forward fold. Okay, except this time the legs are in a straddle rather than um, more together. Okay, so find what works for you here. Again, using a chair or the back of a couch or a table is also a great way to support your upper body. And then again, just as we did in our forward fold, connect to that feeling of the soles of the feet pressing into the ground. And see if you can find balance. Do you need to move your hips back? Do you need to shift your hips forward? Where is that sweet spot where you can find balance and stillness?
Settle in here about five more breaths. Okay, from here, bring your hands onto your blocks. Find that halfway lift. It's allowing yourself to neutralize a little bit, letting the, the blood that moved towards the head feel a little less dizzying. <laughs> and then we're gonna travel our hands toward the right. Now we're going to settle into our box stretch with the right leg in front. So I'm facing the back of my mat. If you would rather not face the back of your mat, you can switch it around. We're just doing our box stretch with the right leg forward. Okay, so the right leg in front. And then just settle in. Find that place where you can let your upper body release forward. And again, remember that in the box stretch, we're not stretching the left hip flexor here. Okay, the left hip is on top of the left knee. The right knee is on top of the right ankle. And we have a little bit of um, engagement of the right inner thigh. Okay, so the right knee is not bowing out to the side. It's, it's drawing in. There's a little more precision here. It's, there's a little bit of yin element and there's also a little bit of yang. Notice when you stretch in this posture, there's a really nice opening perhaps behind the right hip lower back. And you send your breath into that space. option of staying in this box stretch. And it's a great place to stay. Or if you prefer to come into more of a lizard pose, you can slide your left knee back and settle in, opening the front of the left hip, but you're also maintaining that control of the right leg still. Okay, so we're not letting it totally wing out to the side, but we're, we're playing around with that inviting of the muscles to lift in and up. But then also we let them release out a little bit. So it's engaging those inner thighs, connecting to the lower belly. And then maybe as you exhale, you release a little bit and feel them open up. Okay, so you can explore that, how it resonates with you. Maybe there's a little bit of movement from side to side. Hang out here about five more breaths, exploring really big hip opening here. I 
And wherever you're at, we're gonna go ahead and stretch back into one more downward facing dog. So if you're facing the back of your mat, that's okay. If you've turned around so that you're at the front of your mat, that's okay too. Hips lift up and back, spine is long. Once you have taken a few breaths in your downward facing dog, go ahead and drop your knees down to the ground and find child's pose. So returning back to child's pose. So we've done a lot of um, hip opening, so you can take your knees wide, or it might feel good to bring your knees together here and make it more of like a seed, a seed pose. pose. And let your spine round and release, tucking yourself in like a little seed. Feeling your forehead connect to the ground. Feeling your shins, the top of your feet, connect to the ground. Feel your body in the shape. Just a few more breaths. From child's pose, we're gonna come on to our back and set up for a supported bridge. So you can decide whether you want to use a block under your lower back or your bolster. Yeah, set yourself up. and settle in. So block or bolster or whatever it is you're using, something to elevate your hips just a little bit so that you can feel some opening across the front of the hips in a really gentle way. And let your head rest on the ground Maybe turn your head a couple times, one to you know to the side, just to make sure that your neck is, is soft and comfortable. And then let the head settle. Feel that the shoulders are relaxed on the ground. Feel the soles of the feet connected to the ground. So we're just in a supported bridge on our back.
even close your eyes here if that feels good and just notice the subtleties of what happens when your body is in this posture. So this also is an inversion. Doesn't feel quite as intense as the earlier ones we practice, but it is. Can be really calming, really soothing. If you'd like to take your feet up into the air, you can extend the inversion. It's totally optional. See if you can allow yourself to just experience this pose, even if it's not the most sensational. So sometimes poses that produce a lot of sensation, you know, those can be a little bit easier to pay attention to because they demand our attention, but Sometimes it can be really easy to kind of space out and drift when we're in these postures that don't produce as much sensation. But this is where we can really practice being present. This is where we can practice consciously paying attention to the breath and to where we are in space and time. Let's take just a few more breaths here. Your feet are up in the air. You can bring your feet back down to the ground. Let your feet press into the ground, lift your hips, and consider removing your prop. And let your lower back reconnect with the ground. And from here, we're gonna come into recline bound angle. Now, if you feel like a little bit of happy baby might feel good before you settle into recline bound angle, you're welcome to do that. Or you could simply just bring the soles of your feet together and let the knees open up. Okay, so sometimes a little bit of movement, a little bit of rocking feels good before settling into stillness. But then eventually we'll settle into recline bound angle, allowing gravity to pull the thighs toward the ground. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so hands can rest wherever they feel comfortable. If it's helpful to place the hands on the belly or the heart, you can 
Do that. Sometimes it's helpful to put the hands on the inner thighs, add a little weight. Maybe you just want to let them release alongside your body. Let them settle in. So one of the keys to this practice, one of the things that's um, so important is that even though the yin class can be, you know, sometimes the yin class can be soft and still, but the intention isn't to put us to sleep. Okay, so maybe our body gets really settled and still but the mind stays awake here. And it's awake because we're paying attention. We're paying attention to what we're doing now. Not planning what comes next. Not drifting off into a fantasy. But we practice being right here, lying on our back, on the ground, feeling the soles of our feet touching, feeling our head heavy on the ground. Allowing tension and stress to dissipate from the neck and the shoulders. Noticing the breath move in and out the body. You notice the breath moving in and out the nostrils. Can you stay with the breath for five more cycles? Bring your hands to the outsides of your thighs and draw your knees back toward one another. And then gently bring the knees in toward your chest and consider a little bit of circling of the knees. And we're gonna head into a spinal twist. So you could let your knees just drop over to the right side of the mat. Or if there is a spinal twist variation that you prefer, you're welcome to do that. So if you wanna cross the legs or do one leg, you decide what kind of spinal twist is going to suit you. And then just land in your spinal twist.
Let your knees come back through center. And when you're ready, take your knees over to the other side. Stay with the practice. Even when the mind starts to drift, come back and experience this healthy spinal twist. So we practice these things on our mat, these um, just paying attention to the details, paying attention to the moment, paying attention to our breath. We do this because it helps us bring it into the rest of our lives you know, so that we can be present in each moment of our life rather than going through the motions. Two more breaths here. Come back through center and think about how you want to finish your practice today. You can come right into a traditional corpse pose from here. You can take a restorative posture or you can find seated meditation. Whatever you choose, see if you can commit to staying here for the next two minutes. And so whatever it is, pay attention. So I've been rereading one of my, um, a book that that I really, um, really inspires me. It's called the, the Wisdom of No Escape. It's Tema Tradon. And there's a section here. I'm just going to read you a short paragraph that really resonates. And I hope that it resonates with you. It says, the Navajo teach their children that every morning when the sun comes up, it's a brand new sun. It's born each morning. It lives for the duration of one day. And in the evening, it passes on, never to return again. As soon as the children are old enough to understand, the adults take them out at dawn and they say, the sun has only one day. You must live this day in a good way so that the sun won't have wasted precious time. Acknowledging the preciousness of each day is a good way to live, a good way to reconnect with our basic joy. So be here in your body and experience this gift of stillness and presence.
begin to deepen your breath. Allow a little bit of movement to come back into your body. When you feel ready, you can start to make your way back to seated. Finish our class together. Sitting up nice and tall. We bring our hands together at our heart. And together we fold forward, sealing in your yoga practice. Namaste, ladies. Have a great day. Make it count. <laughs> Thanks. Have a great day yourself. Thank you. Thank you. See you next week. Oh, there goes the See you, Lisa. See you next week. <laughs> right on time. <laughs> Take care, everyone. Bye bye. Bye.